Hi everyone and welcome to the Tropica greenhouse. I'm here at Tropica Aquarium Plants in Denmark and the reason I'm here, I'm with uh, some other full-time aquascapers and we're here to aquascape 11 tanks for Tropica's 50th anniversary and we're going to be celebrating this at Interzoo 2020. So we'll go into the test lab now where the aquascapers are. Some of them have gone home actually, but the aquascapes have all been planted. Most of them are filled with water. So we're going to take a look at them now. We'll maybe have a chat with some of the scapers if they're not too busy. And yeah, really excited to bring you this video from Tropica in Denmark. So let's go and take a look at the test lab. So the greenhouse here, it is getting quite dark now. So we're being lit up by artificial lights and excuse the flicker, but you can maybe get a, a, a kind of sense of how big this place is. Really, really impressive. Always a pleasure to come to Tropica. I come here every two weeks now. Uh, my role here is uh, as a content creator and for the next three months, I will be largely responsible for helping to maintain uh, these aquascapes, 11 aquascapes altogether, and give you guys updates as well. So hopefully you're subscribed to the Tropical YouTube channel. If you're not, then please consider subscribing and then hit that notification bell. And then every time we upload a new video, you'll get notified. So I'm just using a gimbal now, so hopefully it's a little bit smoother. Some of you may have seen the footage from yesterday's live stream on my channel, George Farmer's channel. So check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but we did get some feedback about the, the uh, unsteady video. So I've actually borrowed fellow aquascapers gimbal, uh, Yuri's, which we'll meet in a minute. He's actually aquascaping right now, the special Cuba tank, which we'll tell you all about in a minute. So we're just walking through. Yeah, uh, Yuri's is there. Hello, Yuri's. Everyone say hello to Yuri's. So here we are approaching the test lab. Please call it the Cuba tank. It's called the Cuba tank, yes. Okay. Okay, so here we go. It's a bit of a it's a work in progress, so we are in a bit of a mess right now. Hi everyone, hi MD Fish Tanks, how you doing mate? Uh, here's Holger Windelov, founder of Tropica. So that start off with the decade tanks so the concept behind these is to represent 10 years each so Tropica was founded by Holger Windelov in 1970 and it was Adri Bauman's job he, he's gone home already it was his job to escape all five tanks actually represents plants that were commonly used in that decade. So starting over to the left, we have the 1970 to 1980 tank. So we've, the large focal point plant really is the Anubius nana, which is actually the plant species really responsible for kickstarting Tropica's success. So I did actually interview Holger, the founder of Tropica yesterday, so you can expect uh, a video coming from that quite soon. So we have Anubias Nana there. In the foreground, we have Marsalea Hirsuta, a really easy, slow-growing foreground plant. Some Helanthium quadrico status, although it was, uh, reclassified, it's been reclassified quite recently. It used to be called uh, an Echinodora species. I can't remember the name right now. And then we have Java fern, and then in the back right, we have some Vallisneria. So all kind of classic aquarium plants that you would find in the 1970s. Okay, moving over to the 80s tank. We have a foreground carpet here of the Glossostigma. Is there an issue with the stream? Is it quite jumpy? Are you on it? Let me know if uh, there's a what the connection is like on the stream, guys. I should be, uh, we had, we had Wi-Fi issues, but um, we should be okay now. 
Is it okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, so in the foreground, we have Glossostigma, a real classic carpeting plant, quite a demanding plant. It's in the Tropicus Advanced category. And then we have some Liliopsis, Brasiliensis there, the grassy plant, uh, regular Java moss on the stone, on the lava stone. And then we have some Hygrophila simensis, Corium boza in the back, some Echinodorus barti, and that is about it. So the tanks are a little bit cloudy right now. They've only just been filled. Uh, they will be having 100% water change tomorrow. So moving over to the 90s tank, we actually have the very popular Hemianthus cuba. This was actually discovered by Holger in Cuba. He discovered three plants in one trip, and these will be represented by a separate aquascape, which I'll show you later, which Yuri's is working on as we speak. So Hemianthus cuba in the foreground, another advanced carpeting plant. The copa compact just behind that. Some Echinodorus parvifolius, I think it's called. And then behind that, some Cyparus, and then the, a classic Windelov fern, which was actually developed by Tropica. It's a, a mutated strain that they kind of uh, selectively uh, propagated over several generations to eventually come up with this uh, Microsorum Windelov, which is named after Holger Windelov, the founder of Tropica in 1970. Okay, moving over to the year 2000 to 2010 tank. We have uh, Marsalea quinata, uh, a, a slow growing, relatively easy carpeting plant. And then we have behind that some Pogostum and Helferi, some spiky moss, I think, or is it Christmas moss? I think it's Christmas moss actually. Uh, then we have uh, Nubius petite, some more Pogostum and Helferi there. And then we have Trident fern. And in the background, I'm not sure if you guys can see very well, uh, we have the Hotonia palustris on the right hand side uh, behind that stem plant and then on the left we have some Pogostamon erectus and then as an epiphyte we have also some of the Hygrophila pinnatifida. Okay moving over to the last tank on this kind of series. This is the uh, latest decade 2010 to 2020. We have Bucophalandra kedigang. Beautiful, this is my favourite Bucophalandra. And then we have spiky moss, Eleocaris acicularis mini, uh, Micranthemum Monte Carlo. And then there's actually, probably can't see it right now, but in between those two lava stones, we have some Eleocaron kinerum. And in the background, there's some, you might just be able to see, bang in the center of the screen right now, there's some Rotala hetra. So the whole, whole kind of concept behind these five tanks is not only to showcase uh, the plants from each decade but also to <laughs> also to uh, give you the impression of one cohesive design so black lava stone Iwagumi style it's obviously got to grow and he's literally just been planted so there we go yeah, the lighting, let's talk about the technology. We'll, do, we'll talk about all the equipment at the end. I just want to show you the scapes right now. Okay, so let's move on to probably the most high impact scape and arguably the best scape here out of all the tanks so far, I would say, is this three meter. It's, I don't know how we would describe it really, but this is the limited edition tank. So all the plants are from limited, uh, Tropica's limited edition range, or the vast majority are, and we have a beautiful hardscape layout from the guys from Liquid Nature. So we have Stefan, oh, my mind's gone blank, Stefan and Philip, Philip Schwartz and Stefan Graf. It's been a long day. <laughs> An absolutely stunning layout guys, it's really really great and it's going to be my job to maintain this so uh, looking forward to it, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to seeing it develop and into something really, really quite stunning. So let's talk about some of the plants. Uh, in the front, right there in the centre, we've got Anubius mini coin, which is uh, Tropica's limited. Is it all limited edition? Every single plant? Yeah, I think some of the Bucephalandras, so the wavy green. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. If it's really limited. 
yeah. but it's quite new, okay. so it also fits. And also the Monte Carlo is new available as potted as, version. As, instead of the, the one to grey, okay. Yeah. Cool, so we've got Monte Carlo there, most people will recognise that, the carpeting plant, quite an easy carpeting plant. Uh, Buca Falandra Kedigang again, which is really, really stunning. Uh, we've got uh, Rotala Vietnam there at the top, the beautiful stem plant. And then you're actually using the Monte Carlo as an epiphyte there, so that's really interesting. I guess the idea is it to kind of cascade down like a, of course, yeah. like a waterfall. Yeah. yeah. The first plan was to use moss for this part, but there is no limited edition moss. Okay. So we got to use Monte Carlo instead. But I think it should work think, as well. I think it'll work really well. Okay, so what else do we have? Uh, more Anubius Minicorn, Cryptocorani Parva there in the sand. More Buca Falandra. Uh, is that Aereo Kaolon in the center of the screen? Yeah, it's the SP Vietnam. Uh, this is here, Aereo Kaolon SP Vietnam. No, it's this one is Ketagang from in vitro. Look at the screen. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. This, this is the Aereo Kaolon yeah, here? This, yeah, this is the Aereo yeah. Kaolon, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, in vitro Ketagang, so from the uh, one, two, grow. And uh, how else? Oh, Blixia japonica there, I can just see behind the wood. Yeah, in the background. It's really confused right now, it's yeah. out of tissues. It's out of tissue culture, so it's a bit deformed. Aereo, uh, Eleocaris acicularis, the regular, the regular the, air grass, the, 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 the taller one. one. Yeah, yeah so that's going to be a nice backdrop. And then what's the stem plant uh, behind the wood there? It's a rotalus, but it's green. Oh, okay, but that comes as a, is that as a tissue culture or Yeah, a it's also new in okay. limited edition. And, okay, perfect. And more of the same. It's kind of repeated, this kind of planting plan. Yeah. Which and, and don't forget the reddish Bacchaea. Ah, the Bacchaea longifolia is another one over here. Let's, let's look at that one. So this is an old school plant. I remember seeing this in Amano's original book, uh, yeah. Nature Aquarium World, book one. Um, yeah, you don't really see it. I actually bought a bulb of this. I won't say where from, uh, because I got it and it, and it, was just it didn't it didn't live it didn't survive I couldn't grow it so okay. I don't know if it was my fault or the supplier's fault but I, I spent like quite a lot of money on this bulb because it's such a classic old school plant yeah. and yeah, I really it's really rare yeah it's really rare that's why I wanted to buy it. I think I, I spent like nearly 20 euros on this one bulb and uh, yeah it, it arrived dead yeah, I think I hope to get them soon from Tropica for yeah. a better price yeah so <laughs> beautiful scape it has to be seen in person really to do it ju any justice, but um, you can expect updates guys every two weeks. I'll be at Tropica and I'll be bringing uh, updates on my channel and the Tropica YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed to both of those if you want the full story. Uh, but yeah, really, really stunning. And you can kind of hopefully get an impression of how long it is just here like this. So this is a real kind of focal point uh, tank for the booth at Interzoo. So just to remind you, all of these tanks are here, uh, scaped ready for Interzoo in three months' time. Interzoo is a very well-known and large uh, pet fair, a trade show, uh, business to business. Unfortunately, uh, hobbyists uh, don't really attend. It's more for a business uh, point of view. Uh, but we're here, we're there to uh, celebrate Tropica's 50th anniversary and also to showcase, obviously, all of their beautiful plants in the best way we can. So these are the easy, medium and advanced tanks. And I will talk about Yuri's tank in a moment. Uh, but these represent uh, Tropica's easy, medium and advanced category plants. So if you didn't already know, Tropica have a patented label system. Uh, very easy to understand. And it basically means you can quickly look at uh, a, pot, a, a plant in the store and you could recognize it as either an easy, medium or advanced category. So easy plants, which this tank here represents, this was scaped by myself yesterday. Uh, all easy plants, all of these plants will do well in a lower energy setup, so they don't need high lighting. They don't necessarily need CO2 injection, although they will benefit from CO2 as will all plants. Um, they don't necessarily need a nutrient rich substrate and they don't necessarily need a lot of nutrition but all of these things will improve growth. So if you maybe have an off-the-shelf system, an aquarium kit, these are the kind of plants you should be looking out for. So the easy category, uh, it's all color coded. So easy, green, medium is like an orange color, and then advanced is red. And we'll talk about those in more detail later. So classic kind of layout from me. I've got four, you know, distinct foreground, midground, and background plants. 
Um, in the foreground, we have a mixture of the Helanthium tenellum green as the one to grow, Slaragani repens, Marsalea hirsuta, and then we kind of got more of the same over to the right. Trident fern there, good old trident fern. Lagonendra meboldii red. We've got some uh, Bucophalandra species red as well. Uh, good old Windelof fern at the top, shout out to Holger. He's actually in the test lab as we speak, so I, I have to tell the story. He um, very, very generously uh, presented me with a gift today, which was the old school Tropica Aqua Cube, which is an eight inch cube or a 20 centimeter cube made out of Czechoslovakian crystal. Comes complete with a light unit and a, a self kind of uh, stand. So uh, it's all boxed as well. Um, he signed it for me and I'm so privileged to have received this. I feel really quite, actually got a little bit emotional when I received it. So really, really uh, honored to receive that from the founder of Tropica. So uh, we digress, Amazon swords in the background, Echinodorus bleri, uh, good old crypts in the center. So we've got Cryptocorony wenditii green mixed in with a Cryptocorony pechi. Anubius petite as the epiphyte plant with a bit more bucophalandra, some more ferns. And yeah, not a groundbreaking layout in terms of the hardscape or the composition, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to showcase the beautiful quality plants from Tropica. So you will find, you know, potentially uh, more skilled aquascapes out there, but in terms of plant health and, you know, the, the thriving nature and the color and the textures of all the plants, you know, that this is what we're showcasing at Interzoo. So moving over to the advanced tank. So this was Aquascape by Tobias Gaurish, also goes by the name of Aqua Owner, has a very successful German YouTube channel. It is just uh, using the beautiful Frodo stone sent over especially by Adam Paschella. Shout out to Adam if he's watching. I uh, love this stone to work with. I'm using this stone in my 1200 at home and it it is just so beautiful it just it's called some people call it ancient stone you might know it as very very heavy stone uh, but beautiful so plant wise these are all advanced category like i said we have a mixture of glossostigma latinoides and then we have hydrocotyl verticalata which is advanced it's like mushroom shaped plant here and then we have some aero cowline kinnerum there you can just see there's small kind of hair grass uh, and that's it, so it's going to form a solid carpet. Oh, there is some Rotala Wallachii in the background, which you can't see right now. You will be able to see that in future updates. Um, we did just get a comment through. I am reading the comments. I can't reply to all of you, I'm afraid. Um, but someone just said they can't get hold of tropical plants in the USA. Um, we do have a growing facility in, in Canada, in North America. So I would speak to your local retailer, get, get them to get in touch with the North American office, Tropica North America and they can open an account and get you hopefully some nice Tropica plants. Uh, so they are, they are available in North America. You just maybe have to give your retailer, or your shop, your local store, uh, you know, a bit of a nudge, get them to get in contact and hopefully you can get some nice Tropica plants. Okay, moving over, a quick glimpse at Yuri's tank. We'll cover the, oh, the medium tank is full of bubbles right now. You want to clean the bubbles? Uh, Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah, you clean the bubbles. Yeah. This has literally just been filled, so it's full of bubbles right now. Um, but you can get a nice, an idea of what's going on. Yuri's is going to clean the bubbles for us. There we go. We have a piece of stone there. That is not a part of the aquascape. <laughs> that is to weigh the wood down. Uh, we did have a piece of wood that didn't want to be glued to the glass. The other piece is actually glued to the bottom of the glass, so it stops it from floating. Um, but the left-hand piece didn't want to be glued, so we've actually just weighed it down with a stone. And in a couple of weeks' time, when I return, hopefully I'll be able to lift that stone away and the wood will remain uh, submerged. So we've got quite an interesting layout here. Uh, Tobias and myself aquascaped this together as a collaboration, and we really wanted to showcase the plants here. We deliberately didn't use any stones because we didn't want to use up uh, unnecessary kind of space in the aquascape. So we did stick, we just literally put this wood in, two pieces of wood all together. And these are all Tropica's medium category. So these will definitely benefit from a bit more light, more nutrition, and ideally you really need CO2 injection to grow these kind of plants. 
So in the foreground, we have Elio Caris Mini, Monte Carlo, Pagostiman, Helferi, uh, Liliopsis Maritiana, which was actually discovered by, by Holger Windelov again. Uh, more of the same. It's kind of mixed. We've got blended the textures together so it will form a solid carpet but look quite naturalistic with a complex texture, different shades of green, etc. You very rarely see, you know, in nature, you very rarely see flat, uniform carpets. So we're trying to really kind of get this essence of nature in this scape, but still, you know, using the plants as the main focus as well. We have lots of epiphyte, epiphyte plants. We've got Bulbitis there. We've got Hygrophila pinnatifida. We've also added some Hygrophila araguay as an epiphyte as well. Uh, in the background, uh, we have some um, uh, Rotala bonsai. Um, you might just be able to make out some of the ranunculus as well. And in the background, far background, we have Rotala green mixed in with some Rotala hetra. And it's kind of more of the same on the right. And the idea is we're going to uh, trim the stems to probably make kind of two separate mounds, if you like. So really looking forward to seeing this one grow in. It doesn't really look great right now because obviously the plants are really small. The vast majority of these are tissue cultured. So we don't really get the height that you see with a regular potted plant. But trust me, in a couple of weeks time when we do an update, this will have grown in considerably. Okay, moving on to Yuri's tank. Say hello to Yuri's everyone. Most people know Yuri's by now, social media manager for Tropica. I'm just gonna let him do the talking. So I'm gonna clip the microphone onto him and then I'm gonna go around the tank and he's gonna talk through what he's doing and the whole story behind this tank because it is an interesting story. So uh, this tank is the Cuba tank and uh, what is very interesting about this tank is it actually looks like Cuba. Uh, I mean not exactly but Holger said he can see some similarities. So if you imagine this kind of Iwagumi is sort of like a bird's eye view perspective is the island in the ocean. This is Cuba, somewhere here must be Havana, the city. And down here are two small islands. And I put it here because I wanted some filler content, so we don't have just Himianthus Cuba in here. And the idea behind this tank is to have only plants used in here, which were originally discovered by Holger Windelov in Cuba. So we have Himianthus Cuba in here. And um, in the front, I added two stones because I wanted to fill in something in that foreground. And then Holger says, oh wow, you added the two small islands. And I was like, which small islands do you mean? And then he showed me the map and uh, told that on this island, he found the uh, Persepinaca palustris cuba. And on that island, he found the Ludwigia inclinata cuba. And uh, over here, like in the northwest of the island. So if we imagine this is Havana, like somewhere here, he found the Hemianthus cuba. Of course, I couldn't plant the stem plants in the foreground and the Hemianthus cuba in the back. We're doing it the opposite way. So we have here the petrified wood arranged as a sort of a classic chanson style of a gummy. So basically what you want to do, you want to have an all the same type of rock. You want to have preferably an odd number and uh, yeah, just point the rocks all kind of different directions and also this tank is going to be positioned a quite unique way so if George just steps back a meter or something this is going to be the view on the tank this is how you're going to see it it will be pointing into the space so on the back wall that filter chamber is going to be like inside the wall and this is uh, the viewing that only mainly going to see either from this side or from this side. So for this reason, I decided to have my rock chain, the Iwagumi, kind of from that left corner to that right corner in a diagonal shape. Also, it allowed me to make a very long Iwagumi because the diagonal is longer than just one side. And uh, yeah, for now, I have Hemiaris Cuba inside. Uh, if you don't mind, I would just put a little bit of inside and just share a little value along the way. Uh, so this is the way I like to use Hemianthus cuba. So first of all, you want to get rid of uh, the pot and then you have the rock wool. And this is how you see it's always two pieces of rock wool. A lot of people struggle with Hemianthus cuba, how to deal with it. So in the greenhouse, they use the two pieces. They put some plant from tissue culture in the middle. Then they put it together, put it in the top pot and then it grows in the greenhouse. And what I want to do now, like squeeze out all the moisture, like the remaining water and nutrient mix, then grab some tropical scissors and then I'm going just to shorten the rock wool to around about one centimeter, just like this. 
then I'm kind of opening the rock wool and I'm dividing it into pieces. Then I'm also cut a little bit through the roots here in the middle, like this. And then I'm separating it like small pieces of sushi. If you look at this, you know, uh, I, th I think it looks like sushi. <laughs> uh, so next step, you can either put, you know, you see it looks like a little mushroom. You have a little plug here and the plant carpet on top. And this is really anchored in here. And because the feed on the nutrients and because Kuba is a carpeting plant, it has no issues or problem with a little piece of uh, rock wool attached to it. And you only can do this with carpeting plants. All other plants, I highly recommend removing the rock wool. And next, I can either use it as one big piece or I just pinch it like, you know, just divide it in two parts to get smaller portions. So that's what I did with, I don't know, approximately... Do you want to plant, plant yeah, like, for us? Yeah, yeah, like 30 pots or something. Um, and then really... Where are you going to go? Uh, yeah, let's go somewhere here. Okay. Oh, there is a good spot, it's a little bit empty. So what I do, I kind of... I squeeze the rock a little bit, then I grab it with my tweezers and then I go in here and you see I'm not vertical, I have approximately 45 degree angle with my tweezers and then I put it down slightly almost below the level of soil. This way it holds quite well and then I pull the tweezers to the side, not to the top. This way it stays securely in the soil. If you need some help you can put your finger on top and then pull out the tweezers. This way it's going to stay in a substrate in a very secure way and doesn't float up. Make sure to use small portions. This also helps to make sure the Himianus cuba doesn't float up. And it is better to plant it really deep than to loose because it will f build a lot of bubbles. It's always better to go deep, isn't it? And uh, on this side, um, I just, uh, I, I, I was thinking I already finished the hardscape, maybe from this perspective, George, it's a little bit, yeah. it's a little bit better. So this stone I just added because, you know, you see there's a little gap. Um, so I added this little stone here, and the reason for this to be here is because right behind is going to be the Persipinaca palustris, and which is a stem plant. And it is very difficult to make a transition from a carpeting plant right to a stem plant. This is like a field in front of a wall effect. Uh, this is not very appealing. So that's why I added this stone over here, and also added uh, this stone over here. Uh, just to fill in the gap, and now I'm going to add some Himalayan scuba in between, just in the gaps. Uh, simply because I'm not allowed to use any epiphyte plants. So what I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing like the liquid nature guys. I'm using Cuba as a, you know, some sort of a... Yeah, like an epiphyte. So you can do that with a little piece of rock wool. Just put it in the gap in between here and it's going to f grow in there. It's going to feed from the water column. We're going to do heavy dosing on a water column for the stem. Uh, if you have only carpeting plants, then you can do a dose very lean in the column because they will feed from the substrate. So for the Cuba would be no problem. But for the stem plants, we're going to do heavy dosing in the water column. So I'm not uh, worried about the Cuba. It's going to feed from the water column, like I just said. For the background, we have some very interesting plants over here, which is the Ludwigia inclinata Cuba. In, and if you look here, this is submerged quality. Uh, we have, it is, I think in a limited range right now, or if not, it's been there or it's coming very soon. And yeah, it, it, what I really like about this plant, if you see here, a lot of side branches. So it branches out on its own. And I just, I separated a lot of side shoots, just created myself a lot of material. So that one I keep secure with a clear film. Uh, the plants inside, because you see I'm planting dry, I like to give them a good spray with water, just once in a while to keep them wet and happy before we fill in the tank. Everyone prefers a different way of planting. Someone fills in, in the water. Uh, all the way until the soil level, I prefer planting dry soil. And I would just recommend you try out what works best for you. So, um, now the Cuba is moistured? Uh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Um, I will continue planting in the background. I don't know, if, guys, if you want to join me for that, I will just quickly talk through and then give the microphone to George. So the central area is going to be Ludwiga inclinata Cuba. On, on the sides are going to be another plant from Cuba, which is the Persipinaca palustris. That one we have over here, just to show you what it looks like. Here we have it. 
And the Persipina capalus from Scuba, this is the Immerse. This comes from the nursery. You can see here on the lower leaves, they have these little spikes. I think, George, we can show them in one of the test tanks what yeah, it actually looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge difference. Double tap in the back with your... Yeah. Sorry about that. First time with a gimbal. <laughs> so this is how it's going to look underwater. This is the submerged version of the Persipina Acapalustra scuba. This is submerged and this is immersed. So guys, you see the difference? It's, it's quite a big, big of a difference. So, I would say this is it from, cool. Thanks, mate. from awesome. me. Yeah, well done. Great tank. Everyone's saying how great the tank is. Thank you. Uh, Enjoy, the Enjoy the rest of the live stream. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, thanks to Yuri for a great rundown of his Cuba tank. Uh, now I want to show you another project that Yuri has been working on quite intensely, is the special column tank. So this is a tall, you know, I think it's 120 centimetres tall. Uh, this is a mock-up, like a 3D dojo. So we're just making sure that everything kind of fits the dimensions and and, and it's been a real task to be fair to Yuri's. He's, he's trimmed down the pieces of wood. I'm not sure if you can really get the benefit from seeing it on this camera, but it's a very, very complex piece. We have a, a central acrylic tube where all of the branches are, are stuck to. And then we have um, a kind of almost like a Christmas tree effect, if you like. But this is going to be planted with purely epiphyte plants. So that's plants that naturally attach themselves to the decor. So we'll be using ferns, mosses, um, bigger phalandra, anubias. Uh, so lots and lots of different epiphytes. And these will be grown in in Tropica's moss tent. So they'll all be nice and mature, and it look like, I'm sure it will look absolutely amazing on the Interzoo booth. So really, really excited to bring you more content from these aquariums over the next three months. I do visit Tropica now every two weeks, like I said, and we'll be, I'll be kind of responsible for helping to maintain these beautiful aquariums. And also, be giving you video updates, photos, etc. And yeah, it's going to be really exciting to be able to share these updates with you guys. So hit that like button, guys, if you've enjoyed this stream. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to the Tropica channel if you haven't done so yet. And keep... I haven't gone yet. I want to show you one last thing. So I want to show you the special gift that was presented to me. I don't know if anyone has seen this, but Holger uh, gave me this earlier and I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> so very excited. I'll set this up at some point. Uh, probably it's, it's only 20 centimeter cube, so it will go on my desk nicely. And yeah, it's almost a shame to unbox it. <laughs> so cool. Okay, guys, uh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube, uh, Tropica YouTube channel. Check them out on Instagram and Facebook as well. Those are great content coming soon. You take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio.